Here's what I think you will get after watching this episode. Firstly, I think that you will be getting a basic understanding of why this bull cycle hasn't started yet and why you should be focused on altcoins from the halving. Secondly, you will understand the valuations of an altcoin against Bitcoin and why there are rotations happening in markets. And finally, you will be ensuring yourself that you've got a solid portfolio to work with and that you don't need to invest large sums of money into the smallest altcoins out there. This is the third episode of Finance Forward, a podcast designed to you to establish a financial freedom through all the experience and knowledge I've gathered in being in the crypto markets for more than seven years. Everybody asks themselves, where are we finally going to see strength in the altcoin markets and what would be the trigger after the Bitcoin halving? Well, here we are. We are at the Bitcoin halving. The halving is happening. The markets are likely rotating. And there are some interesting key triggers to be watching if you're interested into that actual rotation and if you're interested into buying into altcoins. The rotation is super important to understand because you'll be able to get into opportunities of a lifetime by simply buying solid altcoins. These opportunities and the rotation of your money are essential to generate higher return on your money which means that you'll be outperforming the current inflation level, which we have been discussing in the previous update. And therefore you'll be able to keep your purchasing power and to enjoy life. The only asset class that can be actually achieving or in which you can achieve this is crypto. Um, the Bitcoin halving is one of the biggest events taking place in the markets at this point. And in history, we have seen that it has been giving a tremendous impact to the altcoins. The altcoin markets have been seeing a substantial rally after that and I've been going through multiple of these cycles through which I clearly know from uh, my experience on when you should be buying into those altcoins and that's what we're going to discuss in today's update. Before we dive into the actual content, I want to share a new product with you. We have been working on it extensively and we have been seeing the pre-sale in the past week. We have been trying to get the best content possible on YouTube and now we've also started our own trading one-on-one -on -one course which is released one year after we have been releasing the crypto one-on-one -on -one course. The trading one-on-one -on -one course is basically an advanced version of YouTube. You will learn everything surrounding risk management, portfolio management, altcoin trading and investing, my personal strategies when it comes to trading in a range, in a trend altcoin positioning, all those sorts of things you will be understanding, including, as I mentioned, risk management, portfolio management, and also the basics understandings of um, technical analysis, which I use in my trading. For this upcoming week, we've got a solid discount that you can use if you want to get yourself started on the way towards financial, um, finan financial freedom and on your way towards a financially stable future. Also, I'd like to make an agreement with you. If you have been subscribing to my YouTube channel, I'll make sure that I'll continue to provide you with the most and the best content out there. There is going to be a new studio. There's going to be way more content coming from up from next week on. Um, there are going to be way more cool things coming up. Um, and there are going to be guest interviews. All sorts of things are coming towards our YouTube channel. So. Um, if you subscribe to my YouTube channel, I'll be making sure that I'll be providing the best content that I could. Also, um, I've been mentioning it in the previous videos, but the consultancy is full at this point, but you can still apply to it to be one of the first to be getting our assistance. Um, you can do that by the link in the description beneath. And also you can find information if you want to join our team to assist everyone to uh, to get the actual goal going in the bull cycle, which we are going to see because actually there haven't been any bull cycle at all yet. So as I mentioned in this video, we'll be discussing the general market update, which will be fully TA focused. We will be talking about the Bitcoin halving and the impact on the altcoins. We will be talking about why certain triggers are important to watch, why the halving is super important for investing into altcoins and we're going to talk about the top five altcoins in this video. 
Let's get started. So before we continue, we need to actually look at the Bitcoin price action. It's a TA update. So in this case, we are looking at Bitcoin from a perspective that we can see that the markets are currently consolidating. Um, there is still a case with the Bitcoin price action um, that we're going to have a continuation to the upside. But ultimately, the whole thing is approaching really soon. It's actually predicted to be the 19th. Um, and there is still a very comparable action taking place that pre-halving you usually are peaking, which means that pre-halving you usually have a Bitcoin price that is peaking through which the Bitcoin price is consolidating. And normally that is further away from the actual halving. Right now it's actually taking place super close to the halving which means that being it's super close to the halving, it means that you can actually say that um, the ETF inflow and the narrative surrounding the ETF inflow is pushing the prices of Bitcoin even further. And because it has been pushing the prices of Bitcoin even further, that has also induced altcoins to be, uh, to be moving towards Bitcoin, through which altcoins have been sold off even more. But when we talk about the price action of Bitcoin, I think that ultimately um, in the coming periods we are going to go sideways and um, are probably going to be provided with some tremendous opportunities when it comes to buying the dips on Bitcoin. And when we get those tremendous opportunities, you'll be looking at a case of finding yourself probably in the mid 50 case, low 60 case for a potential entry. Um, I think this is the area that I'll be looking at when it comes to them. So that is what I'm expecting when it comes to uh, the price action of Bitcoin. If there is a case that we're seeing Bitcoin's price action rallying towards new all-time highs, then I think you should be looking at an all-time high projection of 75 to 80K. If that is going to be taking place, then that 75 to 80K region is probably just taking liquidity above the previous high and then we consolidate again. Overall, Bitcoin's upside is relatively gone and I think that we are seeking for a new narrative, which I think is likely going to be um, Ethereum when Ethereum is going to find itself into a low. There's still a case that we're finding ourselves into a bullish divergence, although the actual divergence has been found here and has been rejecting at 0.06. I still think that we are close to a reversal on Ethereum as well, uh, especially since the narrative is currently super, super bad when it comes to the um, um, Ethereum ETF and also the blockchain in itself. But I think by taking the liquidity uh, beneath these lows, I think that that is going to open up a reversal opportunity. And because of that, I think that we still have some sort of downwards momentum to go, but at least because of the inflow and the narrative surrounding the Bitcoin ETF inflow, I think we are very close towards a rotation towards the rest of the ecosystem. As technically, there has not been any bull cycle yet when it comes to the altcoins. Um, they are still getting sold off. Ethereum had its peak at the end of 2021. So we're technically in a bear market of two and a half years when it comes to Ethereum, where previously we had a peak in June 2017 and we bottomed in August 2019. So there is actually al already a lengthening cycle taking place in which that if Ethereum is going to bottom out, from there it's likely to expect that we are having a longer bull market as well. Because in this case, we had a run from March 2016 to December 2016, a correction for now nine months. From there, we started to rally for approximately seven months again. And then we had a bear market for one and a half year and started to run for approximately two and a half years. Well, now we have got a bear market of two and a half years, maybe three. So it's very likely to suspect that from there, we're going to run around four to five years through which the lengthening cycle is not only correlated to Bitcoin, but I think it's correlated to the entire ecosystem of crypto that I think that the thesis of a lengthening cycle is definitely super valid. Now, total market cap is currently also peaking um, pre-halving. It is mostly being priced by Bitcoin, given the fact that we are currently seeing this consolidation taking place. I suspect that we might be going lower in terms of valuations here. And I suspect that we might be even going towards uh, 2 trillion um, at some point in time, not in one go.
but I think that the rotation is likely going to be happening from Bitcoin towards altcoins. And what you can see here is that the total market cap didn't breach the all-time high because only Bitcoin did breach the all-time high. If you're looking at the total two market cap, which is excluding Bitcoin, you can tell that the narrative is not as positive as expected because the total two is currently consolidating and dropping down when you look at it from a perspective without Bitcoin, which means that from here towards the all-time high, there is still a net 60% gain to be made through which that there's still a lot of upside to be done and that you just need to use the upcoming dip in general to be buying the dip and to be allocating towards um, altcoins because of those valuations being super low at this point. Total three, pretty much the same view. Um, there is still an upside of approximately 80% to be made. We have been going down by 16%, but at some point in time, the actual impact on the altcoin market capitalization is going to be less, through which you can assume that from there, there's going to be a lot of momentum going to be taking place, not in Bitcoin, but in the rest of the ecosystem, as the narrative surrounding Bitcoin is going to be moving away and the actual narrative is going to be into different ecosystems, DP and RWA, Ethereum, all sorts of things. Bitcoin dominance shows the exact same. As a matter of fact, while shooting, we are breaching the all-time high or a cycle high of the Bitcoin dominance. In previous cycles, as you can see, we have seen a peak or in the Bitcoin dominance in September 2019 and then also in December 2020. Um, from here, we've also been seeing that from basically the halving, we have been going down. What it actually tells is that from January 2018 until September 2019, we have been into a bear market. From there until, well, pretty much the uh, January 2022, we have been into a bull market. And currently we are into the longest altcoin bear market, which is two and a half years. We might be going up a little bit more towards 60%, but I think that we're getting into the end stations because the gap between the valuations of altcoins to uh, Bitcoin have been going extensively. So many altcoins are far away from the all time high. Most will not be reaching it, but many of them have been going far away from the all time high through which you can expect that the altcoins are still going to have a lot of momentum and can still gain a lot of momentum when you compare it with um, Bitcoin at this point. So this is my general view. I think that the Bitcoin dominance is peaking. Now, let's discuss what I'm expecting of the altcoins before we dive into the top five altcoins. First of all, we need to talk about the actual altcoin investing that I'm doing, of course. I've been discussing this in previous updates, um, my thousand dollar altcoin portfolio and all sorts of things. I've been mentioning around five coins, which I think it was in January or so. I still stand by those actual coins. The only thing that I've been having wrong is the fact that they have been seeing a tremendous amount of momentum uh, from uh, until January and February. And from there, altcoins have been suffering because Bitcoin has been taking a spotlight. We'll discuss this afterwards. But before I wanted to actually start doing this video, I wanted to be fully transparent with you that if I'm going to mention different coins from that video into this one, those coins are still the ones that I'm, I'm looking at. But it's just a matter of which perspectives you have. There's also been a negative return in terms of Bitcoin valuation and the entire market has been correcting. So during that period, the altcoins were going to go great and some have been. If you are actively trading the markets, you have been taking profits in between and are buying back in. Doesn't mean that you have been trading it extensively well, but it means that although the markets have been correcting back down, that my theory is not wrong. My timing is just off. So um, yeah, the coins that I've been mentioning earlier, I'm standing by the BTC valuations of the altcoins have been dropping down. That's correct. I was expecting Bitcoin to not have that much strength in the previous period. And actually that we have been seeing a comparison with the previous cycle. So that pre-halving, we are actually peaking with the Bitcoin dominance and rotate towards altcoins. We have been doing that by a little. We have been seeing Solana doing really well. We have been seeing injective and all sorts of things doing really well. 
but we have also been seeing that there is a case of um, weakness across the ethereum ecosystem and other altcoins which is slowly rotating so i think that if you have a conclusion of why we are still rallying with the bitcoin dominance it is because people see the inflow in etf and because the etf inflow in bitcoin is positive it is slowing down so that actual narrative is is, uh, is dropping as well um, but because of that and the strength that we saw from the ETF inflow, the crypto native traders have been moving their altcoin portfolio towards Bitcoin. Um, and now smart money is likely to rotate back into, uh, into Ethereum and to the other ecosystems because the valuations are just off. So I think from that perspective, I'm still extensively allocated towards the altcoins. And I'm going to explain to you in the next part, when I go back to the screens, when I'm going to be talking about the valuations, that there is there are some real arguments in there that are likely going to be followed in the upcoming period. So let's move towards the screens. But I just wanted to ensure that everything is cool with you and that um, I'm not changing my mind, um, that my theory is still the same. I have been having some losses too. That is part of investing and trading, but we can just keep on moving. Let's get to the charts. The primarily question is what can we expect from altcoins from this point, right? So first of all, we've seen a lot of strength from Bitcoin and we have not seen any momentum except for the entire Solana ecosystem, but we have not seen much momentum coming from anything outside of the Bitcoin ecosystem. So then you can talk about Ethereum, um, Cosmos, Polkadot, Chainlink, all those DeFi sections that have not been doing much. The reasoning for that, and you can see on the screen that it's mostly Bitcoin that has been rallying, but there are some current uncertainties when it comes to whether the blockchains are actually going to be suitable. And then secondly, um, we've got the attack on Ethereum and securities, which is also an important factor that we need to take into account. And then thirdly, it is just a matter of narratives. So within the stock markets and the equity markets, you can see that the narratives are very much lasting longer. Um, in the blockchain space, you usually see a narrative that just happens for a certain period of time. So what I mean by narratives is that I have been discussing everything related to, uh, um, to Fetch. But as you can see, um, Fetch has seen a pretty strong narrative, but the narrative of AI is going to dwindle away. The next narrative will start to step in and the next part of momentum starts to step in too. If you go back a few cycles, then you can also understand that we have had a period of ICO booms, which was during the end of 2017 in the beginning of 2018. It took for or it happened for a few months. We have seen a period of um, DeFi in 2020, which started to take place. We've seen a period in 2021, which was related to metaphors, NFTs. We've had that period as well. Um, we've had a period of AI right now. We've had a period of gaming. We've had the Solana ecosystem because we've also had layer two. So every time there is a narrative and right now the markets are moving from Bitcoin towards the next narrative and that narrative will continue to last for a certain period of time. Um, the impact of that actual narrative is going to decide the um, longevity of that actual narrative. So um, you could say we've had NFT profile pictures in 2021. The impact of that is just for a few months because ultimately everybody was trading memes on it. Um, and there were so many copycats that the actual impact of that event is just small but the actual impact of the NFT in itself into the entire ecosystem, that is huge. So if there is going to be clarity when it comes to the Ethereum ETF, when it comes to whether or not Ethereum is a security, all those things, if that actual impact is going to happen, you will see a longer lasting impact of that, uh, of that rotation. That is also why, as I mentioned in the previous part, you can see that right now everything is surrounded by Bitcoin and the sentiment surrounding altcoins is super bad. That's also why you can see 
that retail hasn't been joining the markets at this point yet but you can therefore also see that the current bear market is super long when it comes to the altcoins that the next bull market will also be likely longer than the previous one due to the fact of the impact of that actual narrative so what can we expect from altcoins i personally believe that we're going to see a lot coming from them and that the cycle in that sense will be longer than the previous one so i suspect that the impact from uh, from the altcoin rotation towards a different narrative as you can see on the screen i've got the narrative of fetch taking place in the ai part which has been running from september or actually august until uh, may march which is already a month of eight nine so that actual narrative is, has been lasting and has been providing a 20x for fed so i think that once DeFi and deepin is going to take place that the actual impact will be sufficient now when we talk about that part we also have a part of the ethereum etf and yes the chances are super low uh, but you have something that is called sell the rumor by the news which is most likely the markets are pricing in that it will not be approved and because it being not being approved markets are selling off based on that actual news item so there might be an actual impact of the event taking place in a positive sense which is comparable to ftx in which we bounce back up from the actual announcement similarly to binance being uh, chased by the doj um, from there it was up only so if there is going to be negative news or if there is any news at all from there you most likely are going to see a rotation in the market taking place towards the ethereum ecosystem and the closer we get towards the etf approval the closer we get to the bitcoin halving it makes a lot of sense that we're going to rotate back so now when we're looking at a few charts i want to describe what we are currently seeing when it comes to the actual weakness on altcoins and I'll just go through a few charts. What have you been seeing? Well, the ETF was approved in the first week of January for Bitcoin. I think it was the 10th. From there, Bitcoin actually went down only. So this week, from the 8th to the 10th, we saw altcoins rallying up. And from there, basically down only as the altcoins have been dropping around 60 to 70%. Some less, some more. It depends um, since that actual event. Chainlink. Um, another one has been seeing a comparable return since February. It has been moving down by 50%. But if you just scroll through all the altcoins, then you can see that the altcoins since December, this one has been going down by 50%. Um, AVAX, another one that I would like to discuss, which has been doing really great in the first part of the year. As you can see from October, we have had a slight run until december and we're down 50 percent there as well so clearly in the last part of the year strength was happening the markets were expecting to see an upwards move and from there the rotation happened towards bitcoin due to high etf inflow that's also why crypto native people were suspecting that because of the etf inflow bitcoin was going to go higher so they rotate their altcoins towards bitcoin and that's why you can see uh, things like AVAX, but many altcoins, um, for instance, AVAX is still down from the all-time high by around 70%, which means it can still triple and then it gets to the exact same level as where Bitcoin is currently at. So there's a lot of momentum to be gained when it comes to the altcoins, but the rotation is still eager to be happening, which is a slow process to be taking place. Right now, the deep in RWA narrative starts to wake up. The base chain also compared to Ethereum starts to wake up. So the halving is a trigger that usually causes that actual movement from Bitcoin to, um, to altcoins. Why? Well, the Bitcoin halving is a self-fulfilling prophecy. People start to buy into it, expecting a positive return. The halving takes away. Then all the narrative starts to take into place. Or people have been making money by Bitcoin and rotated towards altcoins. And from that perspective, you can clearly see that the um, um, the upwards or the upside in Bitcoin is capped. 
but the upside in altcoins as, as I show with the altcoin chart for AVAX is tremendous. So AVAX has been seeing some run, but there are many altcoins out there that haven't been seeing any momentum at all. And because they haven't been seeing any momentum at all, it is causing a lot of upwards momentum from here. Um, so that is another final argument that I would like to discuss when it comes to the Bitcoin halting and the impact on the altcoin markets, which as a conclusion is super positive because of the confidence that people have by Bitcoin and the higher that Bitcoin goes, which in this case is a new all time high. Um, from that perspective, you can definitely conclude that the next trigger in the next narrative for altcoins is going to push the altcoin prices even higher than you could expect it to be at the first place. So let's discuss what the top five altcoins will be. Our mission is to provide you all with a financially stable future through crypto. When I started, I felt overwhelmed and it was hard to find the right information on the market or to keep up with the latest news. That's why we decided to create the Crypto 101 course. Once you start building your own portfolio, it's a must to know everything surrounding the cryptocurrency markets. What is Bitcoin? What is Ethereum? What does DeFi do? And even more. A fundamental background gives you a lot of information to be able to investigate potential business opportunities. Alongside with that, it's a must to know how you should be balancing and building your portfolio, what techni technical analysis means and how your portfolio can be secured. In the Crypto 101 course, I'll be guiding you through an eight hour course through all the fundamental first steps of understanding the markets, building portfolios, reading charts and mindset. It's a course that I wish I had when I started and it's designed for you to lower your beginner mistakes. Click on the link in the description below to see what the course consists of and make sure to reach out through our email if you have any questions. So as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, it is not about having the smallest altcoins out there. In my perspective, it is about having altcoins that are having an impact in the actual ecosystem. And by having an impact, the return will come. And if you are able to rotate it through from Bitcoin and E towards the altcoins and back and forth, if you do it that way, you will be able to actually achieve the highest return possible because you're not every day chasing the actual uh, meme coins, etc. What you should understand is that by doing that on a daily basis, having a complex portfolio, you're also spending a lot of your time into it. It is not marginally generating a higher return to your portfolio. But having a solid portfolio and having a solid plan that is going to yield you by a, an actual return possible through which that is what you want to achieve instead of having a lot of, well, I would say um, momentum into altcoins that you are unaware, unaware of, of when you should be selling the actual altcoin, etc. So my theory is of buying actual assets that I think are valuable, that are having an actual use case and are having an impact. And from there you can generate the actual return. So in this part, we discuss the top five altcoins and by discussing them, I'm also saying on how you, how I would be actually looking at a potential selling them um, in order to making sure that you rotate the actual altcoins back towards Bitcoin. So first one, it cannot be removed. It is Chainlink. Chainlink is one of the best projects out there. It's a blue chip. When I talk, I talk about blue chips, it means that for in order to actually connect RWA with decentralized world, um, or the offline world with the decentralized world, you need something like an Oracle and there is no better solution than Chainlink at this point. So looking forward, we know that RWA, um, DeFi, DeepIn are all going to be massive narratives alongside by the fact that Ethereum is likely not being classified as security, but as a commodity. And from there, I think that there's going to be an eat bull cycle um, not really Bitcoin bull cycle, but ETH bull cycle, which means that um, if you have projects that are adding a layer to uh, what Ethereum does, Ethereum is a settlement layer, Chainlink is an Oracle, you need layer twos, 
you also need insurance policies you need DeFi with that part if you have those and you start with Chainlink as the oracle in that portfolio i think that that's a great start um, of having a portfolio so that's why i think you should be adding Chainlink. now if we look at it from a ta perspective of course you're not happy but you can see that the bear market on Chainlink has been happening for approximately 191 weeks which is technically 1337 days since the peak has been taking place in august 2020 since then the markets have been down only so now my game plan in these regions and we have been reaching it but in these regions you will be eager to be buying the actual dip we have been seeing one slight run which has been causing Chainlink to do a 150% uh, increase but now we are dropping around 50% so these are the regions that you want to accumulate yourself and based on this impact the previous cycle we've had a downwards low in December 2017 or in July 2018 we had a bull market for approximately two years so if this is going to be bottoming out you can expect Chainlink to continue rallying to somewhere in 2026, 2027 or 2028. From that perspective, my theory would be, as you can see with all those ups and downs here, is that you should be rotating it slowly back and forth. So if you're getting into Chainlink right now, it is a great period to just start buying it. But if we start reaching higher time frame resistances, for instance, here, you need to start scaling out of it. So by doing 20 to 25% or uh, any in the ballpark of 20 to 50%, you scale out of the actual position, making sure that you layer yourself back into the altcoin because we are rotating into a bull cycle. That is the actual game plan of getting yourself started into, uh, into holding an altcoin portfolio, which means that you should be buying at this point. You can buy, this is one of the primarily questions that I've received, you can buy in the altcoin against USDT, but you can use the Bitcoin chart to, uh, for data. So you can just trade it against USDT. And then once you start taking the sell points of Chainlink uh, up 2x or 3x, which is comparable to these, rotate it back towards Bitcoin. That's what I would suggest. So this is the entry point. Again, I've been saying it in these regions too. Um, and if you get towards the first resistance point, that's when you start scaling off 20 to 30 percent, being able to buy back into the dips, which are usually between 30 to 60 percent. And then you continue to move on. Once it starts to become very vertical, that's when you fully start to scale out of it. The second one, which I think is going to be very interesting, is um, skill, which is basically a layer two layer one and it's also a modular blockchain so it's actually promoting where the future of blockchain is which is shown on the screen no gas fees um, account abstraction and also being able to become modular which means that as i discussed if you have a property buying the actual property um, is being settled on ethereum but then you need a layer two to actually settle the or actually do the transaction you need an nft to be onboarded for the actual contract of it then you need a different pl project for the insurance on the uh, on the uh, on the house and you need a uh, DeFi for the mortgage on the pro on the project itself so that is if you want to create an ecosystem you need to be aware that there will be multiple blockchains connected to each other so they need to bridge um, and they should also be able to um, pay the gas fees in every currency that they want and that is what scale is actually trying to achieve through which i think it's one of the lower capped um, coins that you should be having in your portfolio in order to be investing into the future of crypto which in this case as you can see with skill there's still a lot to gain when it wants to come back to the all-time high also there have been a lot of unlocks but a 12x is the all-time high the next resistance is 230 percent from here in the btc valuation so there's still a lot of upside to be made when it comes to these projects and if you talk about regions that you want to get yourself positioned into scale you can definitely start doing it into those lower regions so a dca strategy in this one is making a lot of sense 
before the next upward stick is likely going to occur. The third one I have is also connected to, um, to the modular blockchain world. Um, if you know Tia, then T Celestia is actually the biggest player out there. Uh, probably also the biggest or the best technology, but you get the point. And in that case, you want to um, invest into competitors. I want to invest into Tia as well, uh, because I think it will be a, a, um, um, a blue chip. Covalent is one of the competitors that there are out there, which is, as you can see, AI, but it is also fancying a modular blockchain space through which they want to in to continue building in that manner, which is still a long way ahead, but the narrative will come. Market cap is around 300 to 500 million. I've invested into it personally. It also has these kits comparable to Cosmos, where you can start building your own blockchain, making it easy and accessible to build your own dApp in a modular blockchain world. It doesn't really have any BTC pairs, but it is actually entering into a region of interest based on the fact that it's already down approximately 50%. Um, and coming back to the valuations of February 2024, um, I think that Covalent is currently dropping a lot. We might be dropping some more when Bitcoin starts to sneeze. Um, if we get into any of these ballparks, you just want to apply the DCA strategy as well. Because ultimately the autumn high is just super far away, which means that there is still a lot to be gained. And as I mentioned, rotating it back is what I want to discuss with you and what you need. I'll be discussing it in the next few altcoins and through the final part that I'll be concluding. Then I'm also a huge advocate for um, blockchains that are new, um, layer ones, layer twos that are new that are providing a solution that we have been facing as a problem during 2021 bull run. So we had Matic, we had um, AVAX, we had Solana, we had Phantom, and now we've got new blockchains that are being developed that are better than those and one of them and also do not have any backholders at all, which in this case is Psy. Psy is uh, comparable to Borgold in some way, but it's a parallel blockchain, um, super fast, um, and it's providing a better solution than the projects that I've earlier mentioned. Um, and as, as I wanted to explore as well, is that if you're looking to invest into altcoins, it makes most sense to do it into relatively new ones. If you do it in old ones, it makes sense to do it into old ones that still have an application into the narrative or no competitors coming along. So with Sai, it is actually an upgrade for previous solutions. And because it's an upgrade of previous solutions, um, there are also no backholders and that valuation can go higher than the older altcoins. Through which Sai against USDT is correcting, but also Sai against Bitcoin has seen its first cycle. So it's in the first area of interest and it's approaching the second area of interest if it goes down even more from here. Um, but it's down, I think, 70% uh, or so. It is down 65%. RSI is getting into a territory of interest, which means that somewhere in this region you want to start scaling in. With such a correction, you already want to get yourself into position into uh, this altcoin overall. So I think that it's not a bad idea to be looking into a positioning into newer blockchains, of which I think Arbitrum is one too with the roll-up mechanism that is actually bundling all the transactions that have been done. Um, then they send it to Ethereum. Ethereum is the settlement layer, but Arbitrum is faster. And then you also have the opportunity of restaking, which is Eigen layer going to be doing. But um, in this aspect, I think that you should be facing um, an investment into Arbitrum as well. Also given the fact that it might be, even these top five coins, they might be boring but it's not the essence of being uh, exciting. To me, investing should be boring because the boring investors make the most return possible. Arbitrum has been having a lot of unlocks. The valuation is higher as well, but the unlocks are relatively done at this point, which means the valuation is around 4 billion competitors of optimism, or at least trying to do the exact same, through which the valuation of Arbitrum has been dropping substantially. And um, the Bitcoin pair has been going down only. 
since the ETF of Bitcoin and the approval, we can see that we are having only red weeks. <laughs> the first one is still yet to come. Um, the RSI is getting into regions of a potential bottom coming in quite soon, um, through which you can conclude that we don't know when the bottom is going to be happening on this one, but at least using the narrative of uh, buying the dip and concluding it in that way uh, of doing the DCA strategy makes a lot of sense because maybe you don't know whether the narrative is going to come, but it will come. Um, and now the part of the strategy is that I've been mentioning it with Chainlink. If you purchase your altcoins, your optimal goal is to rotate the funds back to Bitcoin. If your altcoin has been dropping this amount in Bitcoin since January, you want to be into it because if it goes back to that level, you are easily tripling your money. But if you rotate it back to Bitcoin at that point, you can still do a 5x from here, given that I think that the actual bull market is going to bring the valuation of Bitcoin towards 350k. So in that aspect, the sentiment is super bad at this point. The allocation to altcoin can be substantial. And I think that maybe you shouldn't be allocated entirely into altcoins, but you should have a substantial allocation into altcoins. But be because of having that allocation, you can actually generate a higher yield. And that higher, the higher the yield is going to be happening is by having lower cap altcoins. But I'm not a fan of having that because the yield can also be made by solid altcoin investments that do not do the 100x. But if you have an altcoin that is solid and is doing a 5x, and from there you rotate it back into Bitcoin, that is going to provide you a higher return because you need, don't need to spend all the time into, um, into researching gems, etc., to making sure that you actually get the return. So that's the top five that I'm going to be updated right now. Um, I think they are solid investments, so um, make sure to check them out by yourself. It's not financial advice, but I hope you have been enjoying this part.